Greetings and salutations. We're back. Did, did you get some like heart palpitations building up as yeah, I did we're actually getting yeah. to start recording? I felt like I was in like a school. I felt like athletics carnival. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh shit, it's time to dive in the water or something like that. Or actually, you know, it just brought back memories. Oh man, how bad were some of those school plays that you did? Did you ever do those school plays? Bro, I did. Oh. I did a boys' dance group. No. <laughs> yeah, this is in like year five or six for um, a Michael Jackson song. Oh my I can't remember which one it was. But yeah, it was gay ass. Yeah, <laughs> man. if that footage is out there somewhere, I don't, I, I, I don't want it. Actually, it's not as bad as funny. this. It's not as bad. I was somehow in year five. We ended up doing the three little piggies and the big bad wolf. Who are you? I was a little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> I was the second dude at the stick house, and my mum walked in because she was like a. They came to watch the play, and my mum just wouldn't stop laughing. I was like, it would have been so funny though. Can you imagine going into you know my your kid playing the little piggy? My mum's ruthless. Like yeah. as she saw me come out, she just got burst out laughing. I got even more embarrassed, <laughs> and then I went red, and then just I was, like, I was in a little piggy outfit. One of the one of the weirdest things I've ever done, like being involved in bodybuilding. Every now and then you get these weird opportunities presented to you, and it was like gay for pay. It wasn't. I mean, I've had that opportunity presented to me many times. Unfortunately, I've declined. But this one was. Um, uh, I don't know if it's called in well, interpretive dance or like abstract art or something. I think it was abstract art. And I was living in Melbourne at the time, and I got approached by this lady, and she was um, a performer of some sort, and it was performing just her and I performing this weird. It was almost like a ritual or something in front of a group of people. This was funded by the Victorian state government. And I got like paid pretty well for it. But I had to just memorize these moves and wear like these weird like cosmic footy shorts that were like That's silver and shiny tucked in. And you know what? Performing it in front of a live audience, and, oh, this is a thing. It was like coming close to the Arnold Classic. And this thing was gay as, bro. I was so embarrassed to do it. I was just doing it for the money. I wasn't telling anyone about it. I wasn't making a big deal about it. Where could, we get, where could we get the footage of this? And she's like, yeah, somewhere out there. And she goes, oh, and, you know, because it's part of the Victorian government, um, it, it's going to be performed on stage at the Arnold Classic before Arnold no. comes on. And I was like, please, God, no, please, God, no, please, God. And she's like, so you'll get to meet him. And I was like, oh, this is before I knew what the actual, like, ritual dance fucking weird thing Yeah, because you're into bodybuilding at this stage. Like, you know what the Arnold I was, Classic is. I was Miss Universe at this time, so I knew what it was. Knew, I fucking well and truly knew so what it was. So the whole industry was going to watch you. Bro, doing that in front of the entire industry of peers, like, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'd give the money back. I, I would just, I would do it, like, everything in the lead up to that, and then I would just fucking fake an injury or something on that day. I just wouldn't show up. I just wouldn't answer my phone or something. It's, Fuck, it sounds as weird as the... But um, the weirdest thing was performing it live, like when it was the night of the event, like the audience watching you, like it was so awkward. And the girl said to me, she goes, people will be uncomfortable, but that's the idea you want to make them uncomfortable. So mm. don't look away if they're looking at you, stare into their eyes, stare into their soul. If they look away, they're uncomfortable. Who, who cares? That's who what were the patrons to this event? It was it was a really... Dude, This thinking back on it, I'm tripping out. It was like a upper class elite, Type adrenochrome sacrifice so, so child. They, so ritual. they were there to pick the pick someone. You you were someone just, was getting sacrificed. It was like bro. the casting couch. And it was you, the initiation process. And you were the one that they were choosing. No 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 no. no <laughs> you no, were no. the one. It was weird though, and you had to make these weird guttural sounds around, like, like a twink. Mm, like <laughs> no, like it was. I can't believe I went through that. That sounds like the time I had to. I ended up. Remember that time I got initiated for a gangbang? That was weird. Yeah, I went into the. Um, you got a. Uh, what did you get? I don't know. I this, can't think at the moment. This lady was asking me, she goes, oh, so are you into the lifestyle? Like, excuse me? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you we're to going, be asked this question? You can ask To that. receive this proposition. I just, I just went to the, the local, just the local, just the store, you know, the... Pick up a few bits just and pieces. The adult, just an adult store, just went in, just, it's like going to Coles or Woolies, just went mm, past of course. for a Tuesday Arvo. Anyway, and the lady was just like, oh, so um, are you into the lifestyle? Okay, excuse me? She goes, oh... You know, I I made I didn't know what she was on about. Like I don't know what, what crap she was on. And then she goes, "Look, I'm I'm a I'm a game bang court. Oh, she didn't call it game bang, but I'm a group sex group something. She didn't say sex or anything sexual. She made it sound like it was normal. A professional like service. she made it sound like it was normal. Like people just do this casually. Yeah. And for, I wasn't. This is my problem. Sometimes I'm I can't be rude or cut people off. Sometimes I actually pretend to care and I listen in. Bro, there's a great opportunity being anyway, presented to you. She was she was selling it to me like it was the dream. Like, oh, you know, we get couples in, we do this, we do that. And then she asked for my Instagram and all this. Oh, and, wow. 
Anyway, before you know it, she messaged me on Instagram. I thought it was just a bit of a GR. And then she messaged me on Instagram. She goes, hey, we've got an event this Saturday at so-and-so place. And I'm like, I'm not coming to your fucking gang <laughs> Bro, I can imagine the, the patrons of this event would be like, look like John Howard and Gina oh. Reinhardt. <laughs> like, it would be head, so bad. Because in your head you're thinking about like, like actual. Oh, portos. bro, you think it's going to be. Riley Reed. Yeah. <laughs> you think it's going to be a full. A Bella Danger is going to be there. Yeah, like it's a full, like, professional event, but it's not. It's just a bunch of old dudes. It's just Gina Reinhardt and fucking John Howard. <laughs> Yuck. Wow. Yuck. Oh. So, what did you train? Because you trained, because I can tell, because you've got. um. I can see the marks from where you're wearing knee sleeves. That's how I know that. I'm holding a bit of fluid. Blood, no, no, it's you can think of it that way. All you can mm. think of, blood was generated. Blood flow was generated substantially. When, when there's that mark there for an extended period of time, longer than half an hour, I know it's because the circulation. It's like when you when you do you ever go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet and like you lean over and your elbows are on your knees and you sit there for ages and you're like, I'm being done here for so long. And then you get up and you've got pins and needles and oh, you can't it's the end of the world. Yeah, how many yeah. times I've gotten up and I've thought I'm just going to fall over? I go in there to relax sometimes. So I go in there to just sit down. I just shut the door. It's the best. The dogs can't come in. My missus can't come in. <sighs> we, we, spoke, we, we said I've actually turned – this would be an Instagram snippet from our last podcast because it's the most true thing ever. The, the bathroom is a sacred male place. Girls don't get it. Like sometimes – Sometimes Danny will go to the bathroom. She'll be in and out in like three seconds. I'm like, what are you even doing there? Yeah. Like, what you, like uh, my, I, my, my process is extensive when I go in. Bro, the amount of boss levels I've beat or last races I've beat on Nintendo Switch. Yeah, man. That's probably the reason I end up on there for so much longer sometimes. Oh, uh, ages. Some, because yeah. you get into a good groove. Yeah, man. You yeah. get into a good groove. Well, You're in a good rhythm of concentration or... You know when like a, a particular game requires a certain level of skill and like you have to warm up a little bit. Say oh, you just turn the game on and you're not going to be able to beat that guy straight away. You need to get a few practices in before you can hit peak performance. Well, you want to know what's what the next stage of that boss battle is. Well, yeah, you, when you're at peak performance though, you can't waste it. It's no, like no, warming no. up to a top set and then not doing your top set. Man, I was uh, speaking of gaming, fucking I'm just chipping through Mario Kart. Now, every time I go to Melbourne, I always like or travel wherever, I always start a new game. I just on the plane, I'm like, I'll just start a new game. Mm. And I'm playing Mario Kart at the moment. Do you, when you do it, do you systematically make yourself go from 50cc and then work your way through everything? Or? So I, I was getting so bored on a 50cc, but I, I, so I did want to do that. So I went 50, 100, and now I'm at 200cc, which is fun, but it's fucking annoying, man. Every now no, and then. No, the worst is when you, what's the one that goes backwards? Mirror. Mirror. Mirror's fucked. Yeah, because you, you're, you're. You've mastered the directions of everything through, through the first few cc's and then you get to that and you i just hate mario kart so much because the i feel like they're still, they're still trying to make it a kids game but it's not a fucking kids game like adults <laughs> play it it's not a fucking kids game i'm sick of it because it's bullshit they try and make it a kids game they try and make it f like they try and make it like interactive and friendly like why did they why did they give you a coin now when you're coming first like i'm trying to hold my defenses against red shells and i i just get a coin because the coin does nothing. Yeah, that's the thing that makes it harder. Yeah, but it makes it shit because sometimes the best driver doesn't win. But you know what you've got to do? You've got to you've got to come last at the start so you can collect a few good items oh. and then make your way to the front without using you can't them do and that then with save me. them. I'm so if if you give but up strategic. one if you give up one drift with me, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you play, you play, I'm sick of that. You suck. You suck at that game. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> shit. Fuck. I'm good. Do you, do you use the purple drift in it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Because I started playing it. Why does it feel like it's driving for me? It had like a auto assist and I just took that shit off. No, no, no. You don't need no, any no, auto stupid, assist. No, that just takes the phone out of it. All the skills gone. Nah. Anyway, back to your original question. I did train legs today. Yes. I trained legs. I trained it hard. What did you do? Um, squat, leg press. Um, just I did legs twice. Barbell squat. Moment. Barbell squat. High leg bar, press. High bar. High bar um, walking lunges. Seated leg curl and a bit of calves. But I'm doing like two days at the moment, one kind of heavy, big compound. Uh, and then the other day is hamstrings first. And then I'll do pendulum squat and leg extensions. Far out. Yes, yeah, that's, so that's fun. It's nice because you have the strength component in there, um, but you also have a day as well. It's not going to fatigue your CNS as much. It's going to be more muscular fatigue and less CNS fatigue. That's why I do it. Cause I found that my quads grow better when I like, you know, there is that CNS component, but then I still want to put them through full range and not feel like I'm going to have to have three days off afterwards. Yeah. That's like, I had a big leg day yesterday and um, I'm fucked today. How long did it take you to get up to that top six? You what, five and a half plates on the Smith? Five and a half. I, th I just, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half. 
And but, you, how long was your rest in between those? Um, not that long. Probably like two, three minutes maybe. But I wasn't doing many reps. I was just doing like two or three reps just to feel it out. But my knees feel fucking bulletproof at the moment. Touch wood. Like, <laughs> Don't jinx that. No, no. That's Suck. the worst thing to say out loud. It's Fuck. playing with fire there. But honestly, you just feel completely bulletproof at the moment, like from top to bottom. But I attribute that to all the pre-activation stuff that I don't have consistently with it. Like I'm religious about it. That is literally like when I train now, sometimes I get anxious because I just want to get in and train. I know. You when can't I do, do that. You can't do that. Because every time you do that, you end up fucking yourself. And also too, I don't feel like I'm actually – well, probably part of it's because of the time that I train, but I don't feel ready to train unless I've done my pre-activations. Because I wake up early, have pump juice with carbs, walk to the gym – doesn't take me long and i'm still like not fully awake yet my body's been rested for seven or eight hours and doing anything so well, you're gonna load your spine now exactly after you've been lying down for exactly seven hours so that's why i spend the half an hour doing all the pre-activation stuff because it gets my blood flowing it gets my muscles working it gets me warmed up then i feel ready to train so i will never i never discount the importance of doing like gone are the days of just walking in and just loading up a machine and start training straight away. It just feels redundant. How's your body feeling now? Because obviously you were like 150 kgs. Mm. Oh, bro, Ange sent me a photo now. the other day of my foot compared to her foot when I was 150 at the end of the day. So I was 150 in the morning. So this photo by this time oh. would have been like 153 or something. Bro, it was like, <sighs> what's the lady's name of Harry Potter that works with all the herbology stuff? Oh, the, the redhead one. No, the, the bigger one. Was she redhead that no. one? No. Oh, that was that. That was that. The, I'm thinking about the principal that everyone hated. You're thinking about Dolores Umbridge. Delo yeah, Dolores Umbridge. Yeah. I can't remember her name anyway, but it looked like the fat bitch of Harry Potter. It just, yeah. My foot was humongous. Like it looked <laughs> disgusting. Man, when you were 150 kgs, I could. It just looked like it just looked like circulation was hard. If, uh, I miss it though. That's the fucked up thing. Like it was hard, but I miss it. That's, and that's the funny thing too. Like at that point in time, you know, the, the food that I was eating, obviously sticking to the diet. The whole way through, it's so unenjoyable because the calories are so high. And now being in a calorie deficit for me, which is like still 4,600, uh, it's so enjoyable. Like so I've, funny because I'm on that calorie now trying to fucking put weight on. I'm on 44, 4,500. That's so weird. And I'm trying to fucking push that in and it sucks. But I must say that every time now, and you would have felt this, every time you just stick it out for a period of time, there comes a day where your appetite goes up. You adapt. Yeah, it's like you get a checkpoint in a video game. Yeah. Like, okay, here. And then you just get hungrier and then you can go to the next level. But I find that if you have any day of a bit where you're a bit anxious or you're a bit off or you don't feel good and your stomach goes a little bit, it fucks you. I used to love when I would get a week of like appetite reset where the food would be lowered for a bit. It, would give me a it just gave me a bit of a chance to feel like I could breathe so I could – slowly build it back up again. Does but your, yeah. what, what fucks your appetite? Like what, what are some things for you do you find that just throws your appetite off? Stress being the main one. Yeah. Stress is the, the, the number one for sure. Um, outside of that, I don't know. I don't really, I, I do as much as I can to honestly maximize it and keep it strong and healthy. But if I do get stressed or I do get anxious, it goes out the window. What was, your, what was your guts like at, when you're 150 kg pushing like what, 8,000 cows? Fine. They were okay. Yeah, fine. No proper, issues. Proper shits. Always. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Always. It's not every time I try to adjust. My but food. the thing you've got to realize is too, like to get to that point, I spent years building up to get yep. to that. Yep, yep. So it's not just. That's the thing. It's so funny. I'll, I've seen it happen with people that I know. They'll be like, "Oh, I'm going to start eating this much food," and it's like, "That's great. You ate six thousand calories for one day, but doing it for one day doesn't mean shit. No, no. You've got, you've got to build up to it. It's not about what you do once. It's about what you can do consistently." So eating, yeah, you might be able to jam in 6,000 calories of pure bullshit for one day. But if you can't do that day in, day out for an extended period of time, you're not going to. There just comes a day there. where you, it just stops. Eh? It just and stops. You, and you just can't get the food. It just, you just, you just, your body just starts going backwards. It just it's refuses an art, to eat. It's an art being able to have the appetite. And then on the opposite side, have the discipline to keep the food low enough and not want to eat. Whereas right now I'm guessing like you're hungry. Well, the other thing too, just on the um, pushing food usually guys who that use too much gear that's going to shut your stomach down yeah. straight away as well yeah, so yeah. but what's the point of taking the gear if you don't have if you're not putting in matter for your body to materialize into tissue if you're not getting the food in it's useless gear that's does like, not outweigh food that's like when i was younger when you're younger you just take everything else I, I just someone told me bro you got to try anadrol yeah or you can eat cheeseburgers because the only thing you can possibly feel like consuming at that time literally i was going to say the only thing i ever want to do 
when I was taking Anadrol was I'd want to go out and eat somewhere. I didn't want to cook my own food. I no. couldn't look at it. I felt Ill. rice just makes you feel like throwing up. You don't want to touch it. I just it was counterproductive because you're trying to put on muscle and you just don't want to eat. And I ended up just going to the pub and getting a ten dollar two ten dollar steaks every day. Yeah, with, both with chips, obviously. Of course, you have to have to get the chips, and it came with like mushroom sauce. But you had to get a drink as well, so like two Coke Zeros, two steaks. I always got full strength Coke. Two chips, extra calories. It was just, and then I just go home and my gut's fucked. Yeah, from the from but that's from the Anadrol and that's from eating shit food. But then I go to the gym and do a couple of bicep curls. The pump was excruciating. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Yeah, but that, by that point you get up off the couch and you've got a lower back pump. You need to lay down and stretch it out. I just took my shirt off and I didn't even look at train. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst. Uh, I was like, what the fuck's the point of this shit? Well, yeah. When you start, the worst is when you start dating a girl, and like you're the gym guy. You, you probably never had this because you've always been lean. But I, I was just like trying to get big at one point and then you took the bulk a little bit too far and then the girl's like, show me your abs. Um, and I'm like, I don't have one ab. I've just got a gut. Like, No, just look at my biceps. I've just got big shoulders, big legs and a gut. Don't you think like looking at the delts better? Yeah. Like, just look at and she's like, show me your abs, show me your abs. I can't wait to see your abs. Uh, like, you just start sweating. You're like, oh, man. You're like, fuck, what do <laughs> what, I do? Uh, what's over there? Ch start changing <laughs> the just, subject on throw-offs. No, nah, you just wear like, you just always clothe. Like shirts never off. Never want to get caught out. Yuck. Those, yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, so the feeling now around eating, like, uh, like it's so easy, and I've fallen into this before. I'm sure you have too, getting ready for a show, how obsessive people become over food. And to the point they're walking up and down the aisles of the supermarket, they're planning a million places to go to eat after the show's finished. They've got a cupboard of glory just built up at home of, full of complete bullshit. Um, and they're just so utterly obsessed with food, it's sickening. It's you give really that two sickening. weeks post-show and then you don't even want to look at it. But even if you do it for two weeks, you go from being superhuman to looking like a wet sock in you know a very short period of time from being the best shape of your life to being the worst shape of your life and not only is that very damaging physically it's also very damaging damaging mentally because then you're falling into a cycle of binge eating and yeah. depression you go from looking amazing to looking like shit and then not being able to have any self-control around food and the blood just continues well to be fair as as men it's um it's a little bit easier to manage that because sometimes when you oh man you girls blow, blow up, up so bad when we blow up we can actually just justify it with just being big cunts Whereas with girls post comp and they blow out, it is a lot more mentally taxing on them. Of course. So I feel like for females, it, there needs to be more more attention during the prep to to negate those side effects afterwards. Well, I'm I'm already making myself conscious of that period because like I've had times where I've been relatively successful with it, then I've had times where I've completely fucked it. But I know that you know with the goals that I've got for myself, I can't afford to blow out and cost myself that time of progress because it just it sets you back too far. No way. So yeah. the way that I am approaching at the moment is just everything I everything I eat, I'm just very mindful of what I'm doing. I eat my food mindfully. I don't rush. I have a little procedure that I go through. I wash my hands, clear the table, make sure all the cupboards are closed in the house. Fuck, you're so in prep. Everything like that. You are so yeah, in prep right now. You are so I know, in prep. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> if I spoke like this last year when you were 150 kgs, you're like, shut up. You I, know. You, I know. Shut up, bro. I know. Well, I'm so in it right <laughs> so now. I'm glad. So. I'm actually really glad to see that you're in this phase right now. Yeah, it shows well, it's, it's where I need to be, bro. Yeah. It's where I need to be. So, and I do that and I eat my meals just one mouthful at a time, make sure I've fully chewed it, eat it, swallow it, move on to the next. And I do it mindfully because. I want to maintain this mindfulness post show. So, of course, like after the what show. What was your process when you had the Papa Giuseppe's pizza when you were 150 kgs at like 11 p.m.? I know, bro. Just, yeah, what was the process? Yeah, but you, you, you say, fold it you over say, like a you sandwich? You say it like I was going to just, <laughs> like I was eating it to be a fat cunt where no. it was actually part of getting my yeah. calories in. I remember seeing your plan and it said pizza. Yeah. <laughs> like I saw it because that's the best way to get your calories in. At that in. point, bro, the process was just. Fucking have an alarm set and when the fucking thing goes off, just eat the meal because otherwise it's not going to happen. I could not imagine being so full of food and so dizzy, nauseous and shit and then on the planet just says pizza. Yeah, but it was easy to eat, bro. The pizza's easy to eat. The hard stuff <laughs> at that point is like cream of rice. Yeah, cream yeah. of rice sucks then. Pizza, when's pizza hard to eat? It's never hard to eat. It's never hard to eat. Yeah, it, but, I can, but at that weight it would be. No, it's not. You haven't really? been that weight, so you don't know. I haven't been that weight, actually. No. <laughs> I'm struggling to get to one. Oh, my goal is just to get to fucking 110 kgs in semi-good nick. Yeah. I'm 106 now. I'm just trying to fucking get those extra couple of kilos. It takes time, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. It I is haven't really. Time. You know what the thing is? It always comes around where I'm like, I get over it. 
And then I'm like, okay, I want to get lean. And then I'll get lean. And then I'm like, probably should have pushed that a little bit more. So I'm trying to set a date. You got to set like an end date. Well, I'm just going to try and see through this summer, trying to not get lean. Yeah. I want to just push all the way through. Not get fat, but just slowly building the food. I don't think I could get really fat anymore like I used to because I, I mean, the way I used to look and feel just wasn't, it's not marketable. It's not healthy. It doesn't feel good. And I feel like once you've been lean a few times, you, you've almost like changed your body composition. Like your body won't let you get there unless you just become a blob. Your default settings have changed. Yeah, my default settings have changed. Yeah, I've changed my stats. Your stats have improved. My stat, yeah, I had, I had shit stats in 2016. You had you know, to work like, on them. You had to build them up. Just some EV and IV training. Yeah, yeah, EV and oh, I don't get me started on that. Mm. I've wasted so many hours on Pokemon breeding. That's not a waste at all. It's time well spent. It was time well spent at that time. It actually got me through a lot of preps breeding Pokemon. I can't concentrate on anything at the moment. Eh? The only thing I can concentrate on at the moment is work. Like I can concentrate on training. I can concentrate on like work, which is obviously mad because if I couldn't concentrate, I'd be fucked. But like watching TV shows or sometimes I can watch it on YouTube, but I don't pay attention. I just, I've already hit that phase where I just can't pay attention to anything. Where reckon that is just because you're, you're um, I was going to say, not hungry, but you just, your brain's preoccupied now. Do you feel like you're fidgety or do you feel like you're trying to get up and move? I don't know. It's just it's just, it's just, just one of those fucked things you get during contest prep. Like I can do it, but I really have to apply myself to it. I'd be like mm, lock myself in, go. But I don't know. I'm just I – feel, I feel like part of it probably feels like it's a waste of time. I feel mm. like I need to be constantly doing something. Yeah. I need to be preparing for what's next. I need to be organising something or doing something or setting something up. I just feel much better when I'm organising shit at the moment. How many weeks out are you now? Nine weeks and three days. Nine weeks and three days, and I mean, this is Dean's words, not mine. Five week out. Well, he said this two weeks ago. I was in five week out condition two weeks ago. Still over 130 kilos, and um, yeah, I don't know. Just fucking enjoying it. Like it's. I'm, not, I'm definitely not suffering yet. I can feel I'm getting into that digging I a bit feel, deeper. I can feel like now you're um definitely not suffering, but you're. You're where you should be. I'm where I should be. Oh, I'm a, bro, I'm ahead. Yeah. I'm ahead. I'm fucking ahead. I'm saying ahead. mentally. Like at nine weeks, you should be able to still work, operate, feel yeah. good, have a conversation. But then as it goes further and further, by the – I don't think you'll get to the point where you're just nothing like somebody maybe, else do. Maybe. Maybe the last week or two. When but I, I feel by that point though, this it's it's just around the corner. There's so much excitement and enthusiasm. Yeah, I don't feel like you'll get there. I feel just like enjoy you, it. I feel like you've matured as a bodybuilder, and I feel like now, like you're you're ready to accept, like the the oblig- the responsibilities of being a good quality bodybuilder. Well, I think you know, if you want to be a professional, you have to conduct yourself that way. Mm. That's all part of it. Because yeah. bodybuilding is such a weird, unique thing. It's not like uh, you show up to basketball practice, play for a bit, fuck off home eat two minute noodles like yeah. it's you're on the motherfucker 24 7 and because the the um return on investment isn't as great with bodybuilding you have to set yourself up so that you can leverage it to make money as well and that creates even more work too so it's you have to always be on in, yes. in everything that you do food training sleep and like i don't know about you but all those things they it's it's selfish in that it pulls you away from relationships and things like that so then you've got to make sure you're present there as well so you're keeping all the plates spinning, which it's definitely not impossible. And they might all just come fucking crashing down one day. Yeah, if you're a mess. Yeah, if you're a mess. And you see, you, look, you see that happen to a lot of How people. How many Aussie bodybuilders do you see? I'm saying Aussie because the, they always pop up on the feed. How many Aussie bodybuilders do you see? Like they'll go from inner prep, then they're single, and they go back together with their ex girlfriend, and then they like overdo it a bit on the socials to make up for all the bullshit they did during prep, and then they're single again. Yeah. It's like a constant thing. Rotating door of relationship. It's uh, in and out, in and out. Yeah. And then you see them like two weeks later with a new girlfriend or a new boyfriend. Like, what is this disaster show? They've moved show? to Queensland. They've what got a new All on the Gold Coast. Yeah. yeah. What is this disaster show? Season to season. Should we answer some questions? Gladly. Oh, Gladly. Actually. I always laugh at some of the stupid questions that come through. Do you want me to start? Yeah, go for it, bro. All right. Most demoralizing submission finisher: A, the ankle lock; B, the figure four leg lock; or C, the camel cr- camel clutch. Camel clutch for sure. Yeah. No man alive has no, broken no, the camel no, clutch. No, no. Camel clutch. Whose move was that? Um, the Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik. Who else? Um, I think it was just him, wasn't it? Well, yeah, camel clutch would. Yeah. The Iron Sheik, bro. He was a bad motherfucker. That guy had a big GH cut and a crazy mustache. He looked like the uh, quintessential 
strong man from back in the day that wore like the leopard print yes, yes. thing over one shoulder. Yes. The, the funny thing about all those dudes from the 80s and 90s where they all had like the similar physique where it wasn't like super shredded and lean. They were just big dudes. But then the ultimate warrior was Killed. just shredded. Like uh, he just came, he was just an anomaly for that era. Like his physique would stand up today. He just would just be there on Clembuterol and T4 coming into an How did he look that good? Just genetic fresh. I mean, he's, he's abusing something. All those guys were. All those wrestlers see, were. Have you ever seen videos of him how he trained people? No. Oh man, you got to watch it. There was He's a, a when, when Vince McMahon went to start the WBF, they wanted Ultimate Warrior to go in it to, as one of the competitors, like from a bodybuilding aspect. And um, they were trying to build the whole thing up around him, and he hurt his knee or something like that, and he couldn't do it anymore. But bro, Ultimate Warrior, if he stood next to Gary Stratum, he would get absolutely obliterated. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. they wanted to pay Lou Ferrigno millions of dollars to be part of it as well, but for some reason it fell through. I kind of wish the, w, the WBF was a thing. It's it's. I it's, kind of I wish. Bro, in a different fucking part of the multiverse, it is, and it's absolutely thriving. Because it's almost like the male version of what WBFF is now with the pageant for females. Or this is like the male bodybuilder version. Oh. Like, like it was pretty cool. It was amazing. And when Gary Shrine would come out and have a girl underneath each arm and he'd have like a top hat and shit. It, it was, was so just elaborate. so like testosterone feel. Any one of our listeners you probably don't know what we're talking about. Type in WBF, Vince McMahon. Um, who was the chairman of wrestling at the time, created like a bodybuilding federation. Yeah. It was hilarious. And it was just, it was what you would imagine the creator of WWE would make a bodybuilding federation. You know what? I was thinking about this. You know how Donald Trump got shot? That was so fucking hectic. What was that? Crazy. But you know how, like, the th so the thing that impressed me about the whole thing was, so he gets shot in the ear and Secret Service agents jump all over him and he had the foresight to realise, wait a second. This is a fucking fantastic marketing opportunity. Yeah. And he goes, just wait, 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 wait. And puts his hand up in the air, sort of saying, fuck you to the shooter. Like, fuck you, everyone. That was fucking sick. Which is essentially what he was doing. Yeah. The only two people in the world that would think like that would be him and Vince McMahon. The two only, They could yeah. think on the fly and make that call to use it as a marketing exercise, which, I mean, I'm, I'm not following it. The, the, the election run you know closely but from what I understand Donald Trump was probably gonna win anyway but now bro oh, like no, that, you... that won hearts and minds of a lot of people surely that that being able to stand there and be like fuck you bitch well like just seeing in that moment that most people would flee they would run they'd duck but he actually oh, can you he... imagine Anthony Albanese nah. well, no I've been <laughs> shot I've been <laughs> shot <He> finished <laughs> yeah done <laughs> catch you later go on like a kid, but the thing, America's like a movie, bro. It's fucking it's sick. It's like a movie. It's, it's fuck, crazy. I could never, I'd never want to live there. Like the way their politicians speak compared to ours. Like they'll be having a presidential debate, and he'll be like, "Oh, well, your son does methamphetamine." <laughs> like it's about that. And then in Australia, they'd be like, oh, "The Constitution states <laughs> it." Like do you know what I mean? It's a completely different ball game. It's so much cooler it's over there. It's so much cooler. But our never country, live there. Our I'm, country is beautiful, safe. I never like, want to live no there. We have no issues. We've got we're water locked so there's no cunts that can cross our borders like yeah, but it's good to watch place. it from afar it's it's a funny thing to observe absolutely are there any exercises you love doing but stopped because there were better options um i wouldn't say stopped exercises completely because i always i always go back to specific movements like at a period of time i stopped doing barbell rows because i was taxing my lower back and my hips from other exercises but I'll always go back to them if it suits the program. Like I never get rid of exercises. I just know when it's suitable for me to do them. Like mm. I haven't been deadlifting lately because my body's been under quite a bit of fatigue and CNS fatigue and it wouldn't be the right time to introduce an exercise like that. It's almost like you have to choose what you want to load your spine with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't load your spine with everything at once. You have to be selective. And same thing, yeah, I mean, yeah, the same thing. For me, I mean, I, I've given away the conventional deadlift – for the time being for the last couple of years because I do that, it just makes my ass grow. So I've traded that for an RDL where I can buy the hamstring, but I still get the enjoyment of a barbell pull. But you'll, st you'll st one day you oh, will course. go back to doing it of for course. a purpose. Yeah. But, right but you've got to look at, you've got to look at what your goal is at that point in time and what exercises are going to help you achieve that goal. And there might be some that are less beneficial than others. That's where it's important to not always have an emotional attachment to something and cycle it in when it serves a purpose. Every exercise can be cycled in appropriately. You yeah. just got to pick and choose with your goals. Yeah. Would you rather die by being incinerated by Charizard or squashed by 10,000 Magikarp? 
What the fuck? I was watching a, who was it? A bloke in Canada that fought in the UFC and he was coming out and the fans were going crazy for him. It was in Canada. He was a Canadian dude. And um, they were all leaning over the railing at the top and the whole thing just collapsed. Then they all fell down. Oh, did someone die? No it? one died, thankfully, but that just made me think of it being squashed by 10,000 Magikarp. I'd want to go out by the... I think you'd go out with a bit more honour being burned by Charizard. If you get killed by a Magikarp, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. No, if you go out with honour, you'd embrace getting burnt alive that, That's a much more honourable death. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll take that. I'd take that for sure. Um Oh, if you could make up a rumor about yourself that everyone believes, what would it be? <laughs> Weird question. Weird question. I would say that like, I would say that everyone believes. So whatever you say, I would make up something like I'm a descendant of Ragnar from Vikings or some shit like that. Some ancient. Yeah, something, that, something just a cool little fact. Like no one's really going to care if it's true. No one's really going to care if it's not. It's not going to you know, change much, but it just sounds cool. It's just a cool little thing that you can say. Rumor about yourself. Yeah, that sounds like a good one. I'm not too sure. you got to give an answer, bro. <laughs> like, you have to. But you I don't know. have an answer. Well, come up with one. What rumor would you start about yourself? I don't fucking know because it's just lying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm but that's the, that's the benefit of it, though. <laughs> just, but then I would know in my heart, I'd be like, this is all shit. Yeah, but who cares? There's plenty of people that do that every day on social media. What's the way that I could lure in more business? Or, or Oh, you could say that you've worked with X, Y, and Z athletes. I think so. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I think so. I've trained I've trained Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. I've, I was worked, there. I've worked with all these Hollywood Maybe stars. Maybe don't say Ronnie Coleman. Like, ah, hasn't like, worked out too well. Shit coach, huh? I oh, say really? That, it's I great. say that I, I was the one that got, like, Chris Hemsworth in shape. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Um, what is... Do you think the PT scene is oversaturated? Is it possible to make a living off for a newbie? Um... I think it is oversaturated, but I don't think that that takes away from opportunity for people that are truly passionate about it. I definitely think that uh, starting out, you will have a difficult time initially, as all businesses do in the beginning. Everything that starts out, no one comes out on top. You start at the bottom and you work way up. But if you do have a genuine passion for it, um, you do have some achievements to your name, whether that be in the coaching field or personally, it definitely helps or you're putting out good education or whatever it is. I think if you're truly passionate about it and you truly love it, you will succeed. I could never imagine doing something I don't enjoy for money, like starting a logistics business. Can you imagine? We'll talk about it before in the car, how stressful that would be, like running a business that you don't enjoy. I couldn't. I personally couldn't for money. do that. No, no. I'm, not money, I'm not money driven though. Neither. I couldn't. Like I want money, but I want to do things I enjoy I for it. I don't want to fucking... I feel like the middle tier, I feel like just being a PT saturated, just someone like just people that are personal trainers. But I feel like if you're an elitist or someone that's specialized, whether it's through your experiences, whether you're a high level bodybuilder, high level powerlifter, any athlete in a sense, or someone who's got education, I feel like if you can upskill that qualification, you go into a different bracket. Mm. But I feel like just being a personal trainer at a gym, I feel like that is saturated. But Investing in yourself, whether it be education or performance, can separate you from that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, next supplement in the pipeline. So Ooh, are you gonna announce anything here? Um, I'll give a I'll give a bit of I'll give a little bit, I'll give a little teaser. I'll give a little teaser. So give a bit of, a bit so of we, well pump juice came out started working on pump juice in June last year, but it didn't release until I think it was uh, October last year. So there was, there was a bit of work. There was like five, six months of work that went into it before it actually came out. That's a quick out. turnaround for a product. Yeah, maybe it was longer. I can't remember. But I feel like there was at least – I feel like the number was six months that went into it before it was actually a physical product. Um, but in that – from so since we started the end of last year till now, we've got four flavors. Uh, there'll be a few more released – before the end of this year, and then a completely new product in 2025. And I don't want to give away too much about that because if you give too much away, the anticipation, like if people know what it is, by the time it actually comes out, no one gives a fuck anymore. Yeah, yeah. You want to keep that hype and keep that excitement. So when it comes out, 
everyone's pumped. That was like me with my fucking app, me and Danny. We thought the app was going to be out in six months. We started hyping it and it's been three fucking years. Yeah. So we try to keep it so like, oh, man, at this point now we're like, man, let's just get the fucking thing out. Yeah. Like we don't even care about this build up. We don't care about any fucking – we just don't care about that what, anymore. What, like it doesn't matter that much because once you get started and you start getting results and testimonies but and people have going experience off, and they enjoy you, it. If you G something up prematurely – Yeah. You can't. You can't. You ejaculate too early. It's done. You're finished. It's over. Yeah. So there. Will, so there will be at the a completely new product at the start of next year, which I'm like honestly, I've been putting so much work. I into I know this. what that product is. Yeah. And so I much, will buy it immediately. So much testing. So much development. So much work going into the packaging. All of it. It's it's so fun putting something new together. The thing is though, you put all this like all this passion and drive into creating a product, and you can't wait. You can't wait. You can't wait. And then it comes out and then because you've known about it for ages and everyone else is now excited about it because it's new to them, you're like, all right, what are we doing next? And you start looking for the new thing to do straight away. It's hard, eh? Yeah. It's hard, yeah. But it also takes time, man, because like with starting uh, transparent supplements, like this was like no money was borrowed from the bank. There was no investors. This is all just – It's all the same before. Like, yeah. That's, that's when you know you fucking – you back yourself. Bro, it's all, it's all self-funded – which also means, you know, you start out with a certain amount of capital to put into the business, but you're going to grow. So it doesn't mean you're taking money out of the business. It means you're reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting. So you can do more and more and more and more. So you just, you, whatever, whatever your living costs are, whatever the left over at the end of the day, that's what you live off. But everything just, else, every dollar's just gone back in. Bro, the, the best thing is just reinvesting into the business. That's what allows it to grow. Um. So I'm going to go, stop telling people the positives about the barbells. I need less traffic on leg day. <laughs> what else? Uh, one machine for the rest of your career, hack squat or the pendulum squat? Hmm. I kind of, I reckon I know what you'll pick. Guess. Hack. I reckon I know what you'll pick. What? Hack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why though? Why? Give a reason. <laughs> I feel like on a hack squat, you've got the potential to load it more. You've got more room to load the machine. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I do love the pendulum, but I feel like it's an exercise that can be substituted in and out for short bursts. Whereas a hack squat, you can run for I a long period of time. It's, it, the pendulum's cool, but it's almost like one of those niche ones that you, if there's one, if you go to a gym that has one, you don't have one, you'll use it because it's new, but like, it's just not a staple. I just wouldn't consider it a staple. I'd consider it like a, an accessory. In it's a, a, it's a, yeah, exactly. I feel like it's a, uh, an artificial movement pattern. Yeah. Whereas a hack squat has still got carryover to a squat movement pattern. Yeah. A little bit more than a pendulum. But a pendulum, yes, we. that's the thing. If you if you do a hack squat correctly with your feet low, you can almost get full knee flexion. You get so much more stability out of a hack squat as well. Like the pendulum, we've got the sitter one, it's great. But once you start getting heavy, 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 no matter what pendulum scary, it is, man. it shakes around a bit at the top. It's scary as fuck. Yeah. Well, you you shake, you got five plates on the thing. Yeah. I use two or three plates and it's fucked. Yeah, it, that movement, like I just love stability. I just love stability. Yeah, it's yeah. stable as fuck. You can maintain tension exactly where you want it to be. This is this is a big one for you. What preactivations would you do for your push session? So the first thing I think of, and you'll I'll explain this in yeah, a yeah. good way. You explain, you'll break it down properly. Um, if we're doing a push session, the main area we're going to need stability around is the shoulders. Yep. We're going to need stability around the shoulders and keep them nice and firm. And the way to do that is by activating a lot of the muscles of the back. Yep. Upper back. So all your anything that attaches to your scapula. So what you want to do if, if you're going to warm up, if you're trying to warm up your upper body for a push day, you've got to think where are the most common sites that people aggravate when they train? They usually hurt their shoulder or they hurt their, their pec. So to offset that, the opposing muscle groups are that around the scapula, the mid back, and the rotator cuff. So all your, your rhomboids, your mid trap, um, your, you know, your infraspinatus, your lats, all these muscles are the ones we want to prime so we can get in a better position for our pressing movements, whether it be machine, barbell, dumbbell, whatever it is. But we also want to mobilize the upper back because you want to have a nice amount of thoracic extension. Mm. Um, we don't want to mobilize the shoulders because they're actually quite mobile as it is. We want to stabilize them by turning on all the rotator cuff muscles, um, the lats uh, and the mid back. That's what I would, how I'd go about it. And that's what I do every push day. Well, there's a video of it on my page. So yeah, we do, we do it together in that one. Yeah. There's a video yeah. of Paul and I explaining it on my page. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll find that and it'll be, we've got to, uh, everyone loves those videos. We've got to just do, a, we've got to do a couple more for the love of are the best. I'm so glad you said that. Cause you know, the fucking thing is there's so many pieces of shit bodybuilders that I always see popping up and they just, 
the thing is they've gotten away with things for a period of time mm. and they will get injured. They will. It's inevitable. And then they always either message me or another physiotherapist that works with movement and they end up doing their fucking pre-activations. Yeah. Oh, the one thing I got a message from someone the other day, like, hey, bro, I've got a sore elbow. My obviously have you, First thing question, have you seen a physio? Yep. Did they give you some exercise through? Yep. Have you been doing them? Yeah, they didn't work. Did you do it every day for a long period of time? No. There you go. There you go. There you go. People, as we said before, they're married to exercises. Like even when I was young, I loved doing, I was like 17, I loved doing Smith Machine shoulder press. Loved it. I don't know why at that time it was just my favorite exercise. Then hurt myself and I couldn't do that exercise anymore. So in my head, I could never train shoulders properly again because the one exercise that I wanted to do was that. So it's almost like I gave up. I was like, fuck, I'm doing these exercises, but I wasn't motivated because they're not working. It's like every time I'd go train shoulders, I felt like I had to do that exercise. Whereas now you find other ways to train around pain to do your exercises to go back and retest weeks later, but it does take weeks of you performing. It's consistency. Correct. Like you don't have to get rid of a movement pattern, but you've got to give it time away if it's aggravating you. Yeah. If something's hurting you, just deload it or do a variation of it for a yeah. period of time. Yeah. Okay. What's the one thing that an intermediate lifter um, – can do to make the legs big, I have back pain. I mean, that's such an annoying question. <laughs> There's so many layers to that question. Yeah, no offense. That question's really annoying though, because first we've got to address why do you have back pain? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. The back pain is a big thing there. You probably don't have leg big legs because your back's doing everything or your posture or your technique under load's terrible. Yeah, so there's probably a few things to look at here. There's probably preactivations, as we just spoke about being one, um, your form on all the exercises that you are doing, the exercise selection as well as sequence of exercises. So I would say like this is for everyone and this would include you too without knowing what your issues are. Stabilize the lower body, stabilize the glutes, get everything nice and warmed up through doing your pre-activations prior to training as well as the core, doing some planks as well. So by putting that tension in the core, you're taking a bit of pressure off the lower back ensure that whether you think you are doing them correctly already get advice from someone who knows what the fuck they're talking about and learn how to execute the movements efficiently safely and properly with precision accuracy and control so learn how to perform these movements because the only way i'll ever get a sore lower back now is if i fucking rdl 280 kilos for eight reps like and that's because it's just such an amount of load that it's absurd it's just that a byproduct of it's the just going to be fucking hard and it's going to be fucking heavy but if you're not doing things like that you shouldn't be getting a sore lower back training legs no you shouldn't be so i'd adjust the lower back first and then look at building your leg days up because but your leg days are being hampered by your pain in the lower back yeah the first thing to address there is the lower back <laughs> you got a question how much oh. <laughs> Um, do you guys have any funny stories that happened to you the last four weeks of prep? Divorced? <laughs> yeah. Was that the last four weeks of prep? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's not funny, but it's fucked. It's, it's fucked. <laughs> I think actually, no, 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 no. That was, it was unfolding during the last four weeks. It was, it was falling apart. It was falling yeah. apart. <laughs> but then, um, then post comp, it all kind of happened. <laughs> it was just loading the gun to, to pull the trigger. Do you guys have any funny stories? Yeah. Divorce. Hilarious, man. Hilarious. <laughs> just lost half of everything. Yeah. Like, funny as. <laughs> just lost half See everything. Ya. My life's work. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Uh, for me, um, uh, I remember going to the weigh-ins for a show. I probably told this story, but fuck it. As we said, every story we've told before, we start fresh because now we're doing it professionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was on the way to a weigh-in for a show. I got a phone call. Hmm, whose number is this calling me? Probably someone to wish me good luck or something like that. Hello, Michael speaking. Hello, Michael, it's Sergeant blah, 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 Detective oh. from King's Cross Police. Like, oh, my God, please tell me I've done nothing wrong. Um, yeah, what can I help you with? Oh, mate, we just need to make sure you're okay. There's been a, a report of, you know, essentially the police thought that it was a dead body in my apartment. 
because of the amount of fish that I was cooking in the air fryer that there was a complaint from someone on my level who contacted the strata or whatever. And because of the building was in King's Cross, there had been a dead body found in that building like a couple of months earlier. So they thought it was the same thing. So they needed to do a welfare check on me to make sure that I wasn't, that I wasn't dead and that there wasn't someone dead inside my apartment. So I walk inside and I didn't know I was going to have these guests of the government over to my apartment at that point in time. So I had all my paraphernalia on the table there. I thought, hmm, how am I going to work? How am I going to, like, they're at the door. I'm like, yep, I'm all right. Like, oh, mate, we just need to come in. Oh, and I was like, fuck. Me. All right, no worries. I had a meal bag with me. So I just placed it on top of everything that was like vials and shit that was on the counter. And um, they just came in, had a look around, like, oh, maybe uh, get some scented candles or something like that, mate. Fuck, <laughs> how's like, the fish in the air fryer? Yeah. You become immune to it. You, bro, the thing, you don't you don't smell it. You don't know. But when someone else comes in from the fresh air and yeah. they smell the fish, yuck. It's the worst when you go into that environment, when you're not the one that's living in that environment. You're, in the, this you're like, oh, fuck this. Peasant. What a peasant of a human being. But then you, I, I get offended when someone comes and goes, oh, man, that smells good. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, it's fish. Like, it's food. Like, yeah, whatever. What, I'm shredded. What are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? You know what it's me? Shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, man, this just smells fucking gross. Yeah, yeah. Yuck, fish. Oh, fuck. One more, oh, one more. What do we got? <laughs> when was the last time you shit your pants? Good question. Um, I know I said earlier that my digestion was really good. <laughs> during <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just times where there was one time where I trusted a fart. There was one time where oh, I trusted a fart. And it wasn't, like I, it wasn't like I shit myself, but some, there was some substance and it was warm and it was unpleasant. And I just said to Andrew, I was at home, I was like, I just shit myself. And she just found it so funny. Like, And I was actually kind of embarrassed. I was like, I'll share this with her and she'll help me get through this. No, she laughed. No, she just laughed. And then, you, you just, then you just never want to share she anything laughed, again. She, I know, she goes, yuck, put your clothes in the in the washing machine get in the shower and i was like oh at that point i just throw it out yeah like i don't even want to know that that's circulating in the washing machine yeah just well i mean it went in by itself by its lonesome <laughs> by its solo all alone jason derulo style right yeah. solo. but um uh, yeah that happened that was a real thing the last time i shat myself i would have been fucking i think i actually remember i was like 12 or 13 years old and i was sick at home i had a bad stomach ache and Again, I just, I was just letting out little farts, and before you know it, you just let one out, and then it's just, just liquid. Bro, I remember. So yeah. in in like year two, I got invited over to this kid's house, and I was so shy as a kid. As a kid, I was so shy. I was too scared to ask for anything. Like, and we were, we were swimming in the pool, and and I needed to do a shit, but I was too shy to ask the parents, like, could I go to the bathroom or anything. So I was like, oh, no, oh, no, what do I do? So I just, like, floated up against the side of the pool for a bit, just kicking my legs to pretend I was playing there. I did a full-on shit <laughs> in the pool and thought no one would notice and no one said anything to me. No one said anything to me. Like, I don't know if it got seen or if it – because you would think that it would float, but I can't remember what actually happened to it, but I don't remember anyone ever bringing it up to me. I'm sure that would have been like, there's a fucking. Oh, bird. bro, imagine that. The dad would be like, what the fuck? You brought this little prick over. He shits in me pool. Like, my dad it would takes, have been my, spewing. My dad takes so much pride in his pool. Oh, he dude. Cleaned, my dad's got the full pH kit and all that. If someone came over and shit <laughs> in his pool. <laughs> there's the disrespect. He's not the disrespect. Over just having a turd in his pool. Yeah. Fucking snap. I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of <laughs> that's that. That's a good one. But that's it's a good one. it is what it is. Oh, well, on that note, that's been an hour. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Um, by the time this comes out, the first one should already be yeah, up. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. That'll be out this week. Yeah, cool. So I don't know. Is there anything we need to say in closing? No. No. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a have a, have a a beautiful remainder of the day or the week or wherever you're at in life. And uh, Hopefully the Blues win tonight. I don't give a fuck. You mate. don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. All right. <laughs> thanks, guys. Cheers.